Hello everyone, it's Josh. Welcome to this video, a very exciting and special video, uh, where I'm going to show you some weird, dusty old stuff that I own. Uh, I recently posted a picture on social media of my MST, Rift Tracks, Cinematic Titanic, Riffing Universe uh, DVD shelf, and it got me thinking that, you know, there's some real oddities and, and weird little treats in my collection that it might be fun to just quickly uh, talk about and show off here on my channel. So I'm going to go through a handful of these things and talk about, you know, where they come from and what they mean to me and all that good stuff, okay? Now, the first thing uh, is the most obvious, and that is the the individual episode DVDs of Mystery Science Theater that I have. I have the entire Comedy Central and Sci-Fi channel run uh, on this shelf. I'm not going to move my camera. It's locked down here, so I'll put some B-roll uh, to show you the collection now. Um, and then I'm going to pull some things out and show you. But, in fact, let me just do that. So I just grabbed a chunk of these off of the shelf. Um, here is the wild, wild world of Batwoman. These are individual slim cases that I bought at Staples. I would go and get a, a, you know, a chunk of them. I did this over the course of several years. I would design uh, Avery. I had like a, you know, a laser printer and Avery labels and DVD covers. They had ones. They had a template that specifically fit this slim case because I knew I was going to have a lot of them. And then I designed a template for these covers. And this still, this design shows up. Here's uh, Teenage Strangler. Um, this design still shows up all all the time. I, I'll be, you know, I belong to a couple of the big MST Facebook groups. Uh, I follow some of these Instagram accounts, and there's one on uh, MST3K a day on Instagram. They actually give me credit when they post these, so thank you. But the cool thing about these is, yes, I have a uh, a, a slot for every episode of the original show. Um, and then inside, I have, sometimes I have all three things like this. So I will have my own authored disc of the episode, um, which is probably something there, you know, something downloaded from a torrent back in the day, or maybe I did digitize a few of my own episodes off of VHS tapes. Somehow I have the best available copy of the episode. If it was released in an official DVD set, I will have the, the episode that way, from the, this, in this case from the Rhino uh, release of this episode, which I believe this was a standalone. I don't think this one was in a set, if I'm not mistaken. Batwoman was uh, one of the few Rhino standalone episodes. And then in this case, I also have, since it's a dual uh, DVD case, I have a DVD of the actual Unrift movie. Not for every one of them, but for many of them. Um, and that's my collection. The other cool thing about these covers is, before I was even tangentially related to the MST riffing world, you know, uh, from working briefly at Rift Tracks, uh, it came to my attention that Joel and the Cinematic Titanic crew were aware of me because people were bringing these covers to their live shows and asking them to sign them. And they saw them enough that they would just started to ask. And I, th I, I think it was um, Mary Jo Peel who eventually mentioned to me that the, I may be wrong about that. Somebody, somebody mentioned to me that these uh, sh turn up all the time at live shows. And I thought that was cool. Now I'll be dipping back into that collection a couple times to show you a couple specific cool things. But the next thing I wanted to talk about were my uh, early homebrewed Rift Tracks DVDs. Let me grab a few of these. So these are uh, kind of along the same lines of designing the episode discs. I use the same slim cases. And here's my homemade Star Wars Holiday Special uh, using the official at the time, I don't know if they've changed this since, but the the Rift Tracks poster art, um, and this is the Rift Tracks edition of uh, Plan, Plan Nine. This I, is not the live show. It's the it's this is there's been a lot of editions of this, right? There was the original. There was like a Legend Films DVD of just the movie with Mike riffing, and then they did the three riffer edition where Bill and Kevin joined, and then there's the live show also, which I was at. I was at the San Diego version of that one. Um, and then, of course, the Phantom Menace Rift Tracks edition. Now, early on, I was, of course, ambitious, and I, I thought I was going to make one of these for every Rift Tracks release. 
Um, that, of course, has not been the case over the years. Eventually, what I started to do, you can see how I have the printed label on the movie. I started to just make the discs and not bother with the cases, and so I have spools of these things. And up through, you know, probably the first five years or so of Rift Tracks, I would author most of them. Now, of course, this is also back when it was all just MP3 commentaries, so I had to, you know, there was all sorts of talk in the Rift Tracks forum people sharing their techniques for syncing these things up and authoring their own version of the movie and then burning it onto a DVD. And um, that was so much fun back then. It was in the heyday of DVD, and uh, this was a great way to, for an enthusiast who likes to get his hands uh, dirty um, making homebrewed discs, this was a great way to do it. Now I want to show you the shoebox. So I have two of these. I guess it's not a shoebox. I call it the shoebox, but it's really like a... It's like a filing box. It's like an old-fashioned way to like catalog things. But it happens to fit DVDs in envelopes perfectly, so it became my method of storing. And this is just kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of stuff. So in the same... So, for example, I've got the giant Gila monster with my label on it. Probably just I, I upgraded to a better version that will be in the, on the shelf in the case. And this would just be the one, the old one, and I shove it in the box, and I have a backup copy. Um, but then if, if, as I dig through, I also see another... Where did it go? I just saw it. I see the uh, over-the-top... Uh, can I focus on it? Yeah. Over-the-top riff tracks... Um, so this is just, uh, you know, some of those, some of the stuff from those spools I talked about earlier. I also have a lot of these 50 movies, horror classics. The idea being at some point that I was probably going to riff a lot of these movies. You may know that I, um, I don't riff features that much. I just don't have the time to, uh, one person writing feature length riffs and, and, and performing them and editing them. It's a little too much. But I have literally dozens of those. Um, for some reason, uh, Spirited Away DVD is in here. Uh, I've replaced that with a Blu-ray since. Probably could get a 4K of that now. Is that is our, our Ghibli 4Ks out? I'll have to follow up on that. This is a, um, a real oddity of a thing, a thing that doesn't exist uh, like twice over. So this is a um, this is the Buck Rogers in Planet Outlaws. Fun with Flicks, my feature length riff series. Um, this is a proof disc from Amazon when um, you used to have to, when you, you know, their media on demand service where I made fun with shorts DVDs, and I'm going to talk about those a little bit later in this video. Um, they would actually send you a proof that you had to approve. Eventually they did away with that and you had the option to buy a copy and to, you know, to see if it, if it worked. But they stopped doing the automatic uh, proof copy thing. And now they don't exist at all, so that's fun. Switching to the other box, the second one, I see more fun with shorts. This was, um, I went to Comic-Con in 2006 and 2008. I don't remember which one this was, there's no date. But I made a, um, a, a fun with shorts like sampler disc, and I printed up like 50 of them, and I had them with me and handed them out. So the fun thing was, when I went in 2006... Uh, I was just a fan, and Mike was there, and I met Mike at a signing, and that was cool. I'm so bad at timelines. I'm so bad at um, memories, but I believe in 2008, I skipped a year and then came back, and by the time I came back, I was now either working for Rift Tracks or about to be, and I think I might have been just involved in iRiffs, the launch of iRiffs and I was going to start writing soon. And so I was kind of in contact with all of them. Bill especially was the one who hired me for, um, for writing. And I remember meeting all of them and meeting uh, Virginia Corbett also and meeting more people from Rift Tracks, uh, meeting Sh uh, Connor, probably Sean. I don't know if I've ever met Sean in person. I know I met Connor, and I went to the live Plan 9 show that I spoke of earlier, and that was a very fun time. That might have been the one where I was handing out Fun With Shorts DVDs left and right. Oh, look at that. There's the... This, this, this box is truly strange, and it speaks to maybe a future video just about oddities in my home video collection, because in the same little corner of this box, I have the Armageddon Criterion Collection DVD, and then underneath that is uh, Birth of a Nation. Anyway, so that's it. The only other thing maybe of note in this particular box is... Oh, two things. But I'm going to talk about this one in a second. 
uh, I see these blue boxes and I'm reminded that yes, this is my DVD collection of uh, you can't see it, but it's got MST3K K19. So this is the KTMA episodes. Um, that is the contents of the boxes. And I found two things in here that I want to talk about next, one at a time. The next thing I want to show to you is something I might have... I feel like I held these up in some other context at some point and talked about them. But these are my Rift Tracks writer's DVDs. So... Uh, this is way back in, you know, 2009 or whatever. Um, there's Spider-Man 2. Look at that. They even put a little clip art of Spidey on there. But writers at the time that I was working there, they were they, they mailed these to us. They mailed us DVDs. And then at some point, I was only working with them till 2011, 2012. And by that point, I, th I believe it was like a streaming video or a downloadable video. But these have time code burned onto them and that's why they would bother to send them because obviously I can get a copy of Spider-Man 2 but this is a time code reference DVD it says and uh, I've talked about this in a separate video about what this process was, was like but we'd be assigned a chunk at first it was like 15, 12 to 15 minutes and then by the time I got to Spider-Man 2 I had a 50 minute chunk of this movie that was mine to write that doesn't mean that I wrote every joke in that section it just means that I created the draft and then it, it was you know everybody collaborates on a final draft so those are fun uh, I have a few more somewhere of Harry Potter ones but uh, these are my Rift Tracks uh, reference DVDs one thing I should probably say about most of what I've shown you is that I'm not confident any of these would actually play because they're DVDs I'm not I don't watch DVDs a lot anymore anyway but these are a lot of these are burned CDRs I don't know what the shelf life is on them I haven't treated them all well these are in cases so that's fun but um, that's that the next thing on my list is the I think still the rarest mystery science theater 3000 DVD that there is and that is Godzilla vs. Megalon. Notoriously, in volume 10 of the Rhino DVD, this is the episode, this is the disc art. And of course, this was the episode that was immediately recalled uh, because of rights issues. They uh, probably will never release officially a Godzilla episode. Um, and it was replaced with, uh, you could send in and they would send you the replacement disc of uh, the giant Gila monster, which is probably to me a preferable episode it's one of my absolute favorite episodes Gila Monster but it's nice to have both um, but that is as far as I know the rarest official uh, Mystery Science Theater DVD looking over here at the shelf and at the uh, collection there's one more thing I want to point out from the episode DVDs uh, but before that I will quickly say yes of course I took the time to create two versions of Night of the Blood Beast we have the um, special Turkey Day edition with all of those bumpers from 1995, was it? And uh, the one that was the, the non-Thanksgiving version, the regular version of the episode, of course. One of my favorites, a great time in MST. Uh, you know, the transition, not yet the transition to sci-fi, but just the transition to the post-Frank era, the brief season seven. I love season seven. There's a lot, this video is getting long, but you're, if you're watching this, you care about this stuff like I do, right? Um, I think seasons five and six might be the strongest material of MST ever. It's debatable. I like Joel's stuff too. I like three and four, but there's something about six and then seven, that strange six episode season, that very short season with Mary Jo featured as a new full-time mad. You got Brute Man, Escape 2000, Night of the Blood Beast, really, really strong season for being so short. Uh, just some of my favorite uh, MST material. But really, this is what I was reaching for. This is my homebrewed Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie, uh, DVD. Now, of course, this has been replaced with an excellent Blu-ray release where they put uh, the extras on it. Shout Factory did a phenomenal job making a great set. Um, but I just wanted to point out, not only do I have you know my This Island Earth DVD in here, I have... Um, and this is the special features of MST the movie, but they were shot off of a screen during a con. So that was for years the best version you could get of those deleted scenes and extra stuff. And then thankfully they released the, the Blu-ray with the new stuff. And off of that, it's not it's just an unlabeled DVD, but uh, I took the material from the Blu-ray and I actually edited 
a, um, a an extended edition of the movie. It doesn't look great, you know. It's got time code and the quality is degraded. It's just like work print videotape quality. But just for my own uh, enjoyment, I made myself a, an extended edition Mystery Science Theater the movie uh, edition that I can pop in from time to time. It's a it's a curiosity if nothing else. All right, this is already way longer than I thought it was going to be. So just two more quick things I want to show you. One, I just wanted to shout out. I just wanted to shout out my friends uh, at Incognito Cinema Warriors. This has evolved into something new, a robot co-op and all that fun stuff from Agony Wolf. Um, these are episodes that I... This one I did not write for, uh, Lady Frankenstein. This one I did, Bloody Pit of Horror. I think it was the first time I, I worked with them and wrote some riffs for this movie. Love this episode. Love this show. Uh, love Rick and those guys. Um, but I also wanted to mention something here next to it that I had forgotten about until I started digging through this collection again. Anybody ever hear of Cartoon Lagoon? This is a very interesting riffing show that riffs on public domain cartoons. And I think there's like a few episodes. I think it's like in the format of like a, like a show with, with multiple episodes. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's all just one long... It's been a long time since I watched this. But I enjoyed it. I loved the look of it. It's like little... It's little puppets... And uh, they watch, like, the Fleischer, Popeyes, and Supermans, and Old Casper and stuff. So I imagine they might have issues with rights on some of these characters, but these are the films of these characters that are public domain. Anyway, I forgot about this. I don't know what's going Maybe somebody has an update on this group. Maybe I should go poke around and see if there's a volume two. It promises volume two coming soon here on the back. But um, this is uh, one of many you know, amateur riffing enterprises of which I've been fortunate enough to uh, you know, trade DVDs with people and, and catch up on and all that fun stuff. The last thing I want to talk about, and the most tragic, the most whimsically tragic of all of them, is of course the now uh, impossible to get Fun With Shorts DVDs. Now I don't have... Uh, the complete collection, uh, at least not in terms of, you know, the, the the printed physical editions. Obviously, I authored all of these DVDs, and I have all the files on this computer right here. But uh, I wasn't able to order. I mean, I, I made it up to volume thirty something on physical disc, and I was not able to buy a copy of every one. So here I have my first five shorts volumes, and then I have uh, Wasp Woman. Along the lines of my MST covers showing up, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but my MST DVD covers, sometimes you go to Amazon Prime and you watch an episode there. They'll have my artwork as the artwork for the episode on Amazon. It's very strange. Uh, same thing with my Wasp Woman art. I don't see it much anymore, but for a while I saw this as the official movie art. It's just the official poster, but I saw they would have the Fun with Flicks banner at the top, strangely, because they were not showing this version of it. Uh, the, the last feature I ever released... Um, Monster Maker and then there's uh, Petrified World, Laser Mission of course Voyage of the Prehistoric to the Prehistoric Planet, I don't remember my own riffs, anyway, uh, I don't mean to rub it in, if any of you are, are, are wishing you could have Fun With Shorts DVDs, who watches DVDs anyway, you can go to funwithshorts.com and you can buy VODs of all this stuff, yes I'm behind, I need to get maybe 10 shorts volumes, we're up to, we're up to volume 45 I believe on the newest shorts that I'm recording currently which is crazy. But um, if any of you have these, uh, enjoy them. They are rare now. Not that they have value, except to us, right, if we enjoy them. But um, that's it. There's more stuff maybe I'll pick through deeper. I'm definitely going to do another video where I just, in general, talk about my DVD collection and dig out some of the weirder stuff that's not riffing related. But I hope you enjoyed that whirlwind tour. I need to cut this off now because it's gone on way too long. But wow, that was a really fun... Uh, nostalgia trip and I thank you for your time I'll see you with a new short very soon and uh, thanks for watching bye